Chairman, I would like to introduce Mr. Michael Sanderson, who is a proxy holder. Uh, good morning. Um, I'm a foundation member of the uh, Bank Warrior Group, I'm also a advisor to the Bank Reform Now organisation, and I'd like to correct my colleague, uh, Mr. Caulfield, uh, that organisation now exceeds 15,000. A little bit out in these numbers, it continues to grow. Um, many bank shareholders also have loans. It would seem these customers are between a rock and a hard place when it comes to benefiting from the RBA's interest rate cuts. To justify not passing on the full rate cut, the banks say they not only need to look after the borrowers, but also the depositors. The reality is the vast majority of bank lending is facilitated by the issuing of credit under licence by simply typing numbers into a computer, not the lending of deposits. Because the vast majority of customer loans are not facilitated by deposits, borrowing, etc., how does the bank justify not passing on the full RBA interest rate cut? Thank you, Mr Sanderson. Um, in terms of our funding, about 69% of it comes from deposits and the balance comes from wholesale borrowing, um, including from overseas markets. So just so in terms... You, you were categorically saying that the banks do not issue credit that is not underpinned by either borrowing or deposits. Is that your categorical statement? Um, I'm not... I might ask my CEO to see if he can clarify what yeah, you mean. Yeah, I mean, the way the... I'm not sure I completely understand the characterisation, but the, the way the Chair articulated it is, is perfectly correct. The proportion of our lending uh, is funded. The way that is funded is 69% of that is through deposits. That's probably up from 60% a decade ago, which makes the, you know, the bank a stronger bank with more access to liquid deposits. The, rem the remaining 31% is funded through wholesale markets. So actually the changes to deposit rates, particularly at the moment, are the most the truest reflection and have the largest impact on the funding cost to the Commonwealth Bank. And what we've seen and we've called out in our recent uh, pricing decision is because we're now moving to a very low interest rate environment, we're unable to change uh, the prices for a number of those deposits. So we've talked about $160 billion of deposits. The predominance of those are transactions and savings accounts where those rates are either at or very close to zero, and we're unable to or we've chosen not to make any changes to those prices. That's one of the many factors why uh, a low interest rate environment puts pressure on particularly the net interest margin for financial institutions. Okay, you, again, you've missed the point. What, what I'm asking you, are there any circumstances where the bank issues credit that is not underpinned by borrowing and deposits? You, you have categorically said, based on what you, you, you've said there, is that the banks don't have a credit licence and they have to rely 100% on deposits and borrowing in order to lend. Is that the categorical position of the bank? That is correct. We certainly do have a credit licence though mm. and uh, we're an authorised deposit taking institution as well. Okay. And we what, what is the, uh, explain the credit licence. What is it? Well, does, does that enable you to lend to customers without um, using uh, deposits or borrowing? The financial institution, I mean, the, the credit licence itself has a number of different obligations, but for a financial institution, there are a range of particularly prudential standards, which talk particularly to both capital levels, uh, as well as liquidity requirements, uh, and including the way we're able to, to fund ourselves as well. It's a relatively complex area. Now, I understand that, and uh, th that is the issue. So, Mr but Sanderson, I, I think, because we're getting into quite a technical discussion. Perhaps I can suggest that after the meeting, Alan Doherty meets with you and can go through in detail through the balance sheet and how the, the borrowing side, the funding side and, and the lending side works. I'd, I'd happy to be, uh, to talk. However, 
I was looking at a very simplistic answer. Does the bank yeah. lend, uh, issue credit without the requirement of a deposit and to borrow? It is a fundamental, crucial question. That I think we've answered the question about where the funding comes from. It comes from deposits and borrowings. 100%. And yes. then... So uh, the simple yeah. answer to your question is no. No. Oh. So, okay, understand. So obviously the credit licence is used and there is no requirement for the bank to have deposits and lending apart from capital requirements in order to make a, uh, a loan to a customer. There's not a singular... Uh, standard or licence, you have to put them together and I know, I know it's complex, but the basic understanding of average J Blow out there in the community is that the bank requires air deposits in order to lend. Uh, what I'm trying to establish that is not the case, the bank has a licence to be able to issue credit without um, um, having the deposits in the bank to be able to make those loans. Mr Sanderson, um, the deposit funding of our balance sheet is a crucial part of our funding. I'm not suggesting it isn't. So I think, as I said, uh, in the interest of being able to progress the meeting, can I suggest that uh, you meet with Alan Doherty after the meeting and he can go through in more detail with Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you.